happy to see you as one of our resource person in this webinar. Of course, uh, DILG uh, uh, support the local government program led by Undersecretary Barlow Irihan. The Freedom of Information uh, Project Management Office, FOI PMO of the Presidential Communications Operations Office through Undersecretary Chris Ablan. And of course, and to all of you here in Zoom and on Facebook, welcome to the fourth day of the Philippine OGP Open Government Week with a theme, Sustaining Open and Participatory Government in the Time of Pandemic. As mentioned earlier, we are now on the fourth day of the Open Gov, Open Gov Week series of, of online sessions uh, that tackles what? Number one, citizens' participation last Monday. And number two is the innovation on technology last Tuesday and special concern yesterday and today on fiscal transparency. Okay, so uh, this session aims to uh, formally launch the start of the Philippines Initiative on Fiscal Transparency Efforts. Also to present and share the Philippines uh, entry to the gift user engagement activities. Also to encourage the citizen to participate in the data quests and data rally activities. So the Philippines, led by the DBM together with our partner DILG and PCOO, have jointly undertaken to participate in this year's GIF user engagement activity to promote fiscal transparency efforts in the time of pandemic. Specifically, the DILG and DBM will be undertaking data rally from home pictures as means of engagement. This is capturing transparency and accountability in the lens of every Filipino. So this initiative will leverage on the use of civic technology to inform, engage, and connect the citizens with their government to improve public service delivery. Now in partnership with the United Nations Development Program or UNDP, this initiative introduces the uh, mobile application called Development Live or Dev Live. Later in the program, uh, our friends uh, from DILG will provide you a complete picture of how this initiative can be a good platform to increase citizens' participation and foster transparency and accountability. Now, another undertaking which will be operationalized by the PCOO, Freedom of Information Project Management Office, is the uh, better, better Budget Data Quests, Integrating Transparency in Gender and Development. A call to action activity which aims to encourage the public to rally for the disclosure of God budgets that the law requires of uh, the national government agencies and also the local government units through the use of FOI portal. So the FOI team will surely give you an engaging uh, presentation on this as we move along in the program. I know you are all excited to know more about these programs and on how you can participate actively uh, or proactively even on these government advocacies. Uh, hindi ko na siguro pahabain pang aking message to, so that we can have more time for the discussion. So I believe as Robin mentioned, there is a su surprise gift. Uh, take note, surprise gift towards the end of the session. So relax muna tayo dyan. For now, and listen to the presentations we have in store for you. So once again, thank you for all uh, for, for making this time and allowing yourselves to attend this uh, webinar. So again, good morning. Thank you and maraming salamat. Magingat po tayo. 
Thank you very much, Asa Kriyoli, for that um, wonderful message. You've mentioned two key undertakings of the government, DevLive and FOI. Um, I'm sure uh, these, are, these two initiatives are really important on how we can increase the participation of the citizens through fiscal transparency. Now, ano nga ba ang gifts user engagement activity? And uh, why is this important to the public? And when we say better budget data quest and data rally from home, what does it mean in engaging the citizens on fiscal transparency? We are glad to be joined by the network direct director himself of the Global Initiative for Fiscal Transparency to tell us more about this program. Uh, in fact, we are really thankful despite of the time difference. We are joined by the gift team. I saw Aura kanina. So virtual clap to Juan Pablo Guerrero, please. Hi, JPG, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning. I am very pleased to be part of this important event. Um, thank you to Assistant Secretary Rolando Toledo. Thank you, Rob, for the very warm welcome. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, uh, the GIFT Network. And uh, uh, then let me speak a little bit about uh, the Department of Budget and Management as a member of the GIVE Network. Uh, as Robin has mentioned, uh, we have around the room uh, Aura Martinez, the GIFT coordinator for knowledge and uh, uh, technical assistance. And uh, she will be uh, afterwards addressing any questions you may have and uh, surely uh, be part of the surprise. And since we have that, I won't take much of your time. The GIFT network was established 10 years ago. Yes, we are turning in 10. And the Philippines Department of Budget and Management was behind the initiative from the very beginning. The main objective of the initiative was to advance fiscal transparency in countries around the world. But what makes GIFT different? Well, the fact that we have come to realize that if we really want to push this agenda strongly and uh, sustainably, Governments cannot do it on their own. They absolutely need other stakeholders to help, and particularly, and at the center, civil society. So a little bit in the framework of OGP, it makes sense to push the agenda of fiscal transparency, and it only works if citizens engage if they are part of the effort, if they complement, if they support, but also very important, if they demand and eventually if they uh, ask for accountability. So the basic principle behind GIFT is that fiscal transparency, if it's not used, is useless. So we need the users to engage to close the circle, the virtual circle of transparency, participation, and accountability that takes us to better public services, more trust in government institutions, and inclusion uh, to have the opportunity to reach out to communities that otherwise would be forgotten, voiceless, left behind. So those are very important uh, objectives where fiscal transparency and public participation work together. And we are so glad that from the beginning, uh, the uh, Department of Budget and Management, and Management was part of the effort. Uh, they are not only members of uh, the network, but they are uh, one of the lead stewards, that is, we have a governing board. And um, it means that uh, we call upon them quite often and sometimes in the middle of the night. So the least thing we could do today is of course to be in this meeting, uh, even if it's a little bit late here and based in Washington. Uh, so we're very happy. Uh, they uh, 
help the governing board to lead the network. They engage, they support, they bring about the governing perspective. We have other members such as the International Budget Partnership, the IMF, the World Bank International Organizations, but governments, we have three in our board, uh, um, uh, and that is the Philippines, Brazil, and Mexico. So we're very grateful. And I'll finish mentioning why uh, uh, the department is so a uh, meaningful member of uh, the GIFT network. Not only because, as said, they're part of the board and they engage, but basically because they lead by example. Whenever we have to refer to good practice on transparency, on citizen engagement, we end up uh, naming a few countries, among them very often the Philippines. And just to put one example, the way your country has responded to the COVID-19 emergency crisis and how uh, timely and uh, ready it has been to publish information about the measures, the implications, who benefits, who loses, all of this in a portal makes, again, the Philippines an exceptional example of uh, transparency around the world. So happy to be here. Congratulations. And now let's uh, see what we're talking about, about new ways of engaging the public and the surprise. Thank you. Thank you very much, JPG, for that insightful message and for bringing in the Philippines in the international perspective. I'd like to, to, I'd like to highlight what you have mentioned, that fiscal transparency is, uh, if not used, is useless, and that the citizens should complement, support, demand, and ask for the accountability. Thank you very much. Uh, good night to you over there, and thank you for sending Aura to stay throughout the session. So forgive me, Aura, I have to stay with us throughout the session. So if you have questions about the GIFT user engagement activities, so please use the Zoom chat box for our Facebook live feed. And uh, later on, we will answer that during the open forum. Now, to, bet, uh, to better understand that uh, what are these initiatives of the Philippines on fiscal transparency, we are joined by two important agencies to share with you their initiatives on how you guys can participate in their activities. First off, we have the engagement officer of the Presidential Communications Operations Office, uh, Freedom of Information PMO, Ms. Marinella Rica Franca, to tell us about the FOI for GAD and Gender, FOI for GAD, which is Gender and Development. So, Ella, take it away. Hello, everyone. As introduced earlier, I am Marinella Rica Franca, an engagement officer from the Freedom of Information Project Management Office of the Presidential Communications Operations Office. I form part of the three women team of FYPMO called the Strategic Partnerships Unit, which is responsible for seeking and cultivating partnerships with various stakeholders from the government, civil society organizations, private sector, academe, media, and other like-minded individuals and groups who and which also push in making government information closer to the people. I am joyed to be one of the research speakers in today's first session of this year's Hashtag Open Government Week, sustaining open and participatory government in the time of pandemic, entitled GIFT, Engaging Citizens for Fiscal Transparency. In particular, I will be discussing the fiscal initiative of PCOO, formerly known as the Better Budget Data Quest, integrating transparency in gender and development in a few minutes. But before that, allow me to give you a brief background of why we came up with this initiative. I am sure our friends from the Department of Budget and Management already introduced you to the Global Initiative for Fiscal Transparency and mentioned the rationale of our engagement with the organization, so I will not make this long. To put it simply, our Better Budget Data Quest activity is an offshoot of our engagement with GIFT. 
quoting the organization, it is a global network that facilitates dialogue between, between its st stewards and partners from government, civil society organizations, international financial institutions, and other stakeholders to find and share solutions to challenges in fiscal transparency and participation. Two of GIF's projects involving the government and CSOs are the Data on the Streets International Rally and the Better Budget Data Quest for Sustainable Development. Seeing the, the initiative as relative to enhancing citizen participation in government processes, the Department of Budget and Management, the Department of the Interior and Local Government, and the Presidential Communications Operations Office, as the chair and members of the participatory governance cluster of the Cabinet of the Philippines, submitted its official entries to this fiscal initiative. Need on the Streets International Rally for DILG and DBM and Better Budget Data Quest for PCOO. In gist, Date on the Streets International Rally pertains to hard projects, such as construction projects, while the Better Budget Data Quest focuses on soft projects, for instance, tackling issues of gender inequality, environment, etc. As I have already established the foundation, I will now go to the meat of my discussion, which is the Better Budget Data Quest, Integrating Transparency in Gender and Development. In case you are not familiar, Republic Act 9710, or the Magna Carta of Women, mandates international government agencies and LGUs to allocate at least 5% of their annual budget preparations for the implementation of gender and development programs. While 5% is seemingly small compared to other budget allocations to government agencies, in aggregate, 5% of all agencies is a huge amount. Also, no matter how big or small the money allocated, taxpayers' money is taxpayers' money, and government agencies must be made accountable every time. Furthermore, given that the budget is considered as one of the primary instruments of fiscal policy, where the money is allocated for and how it is being spent says a lot more as to where the political commitment of the government lies in the spectrum of national imperatives. Therefore, keeping an eye on the money trail, specifically on GAD expenditure items, is crucial to ensure that gender mainstreaming programs and activities do not remain written in paper. This activity is also linked with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, which was launched by the UN General Assembly in 2015. Considered as cross-cutting concerns are achieving gender equality, and ensuring public access to information. And these are specifically incorporated under Goal 5 and Goal 16 of the SDGs. Going further, there's a pool of GAD data and information proactively or reactively disclosed by various government agencies and are available to the public. This is possible through the implementation of programs and policies, such as the Executive Order No. 2, Series of 2016, operationalizing the executive branch the people's constitutional right to information and the state policies to full public disclosure and transparency in the public service and other government transparency and accountability mechanisms by other government agencies at the national and local level. What the PCOO aims to achieve is to give a platform to data champions women in LGBTQIA plus sector and advocates and regular citizens alike to gain new insights on how the government utilizes their GAD budgets and come up with innovative ideas to improve its disclosure and in the long run, enhance God bu GAD budget allocations and its execution. Moving forward, allow me to present to you the activity's objectives. First is to empower individuals to ask for information from the government. Second is to analyze GAD allocations and expenditure of state agencies. Third is to gain a deeper and broader understanding and appreciation of GAD data. Fourth is to build gender awareness on the ground and inculcate GAD in various public processes and enhance publication of GAD data. And fifth and last 
is to utilize the EFOI portal in continuously engaging with stakeholders in their exercise of the right to access government information, especially during the pandemic. To simply put, what this activity hopes to achieve is for people to use and interpret the available gender and development data and information offered by various government transparency and accountability websites and other reliable sources of information such as LGU data and transform them into meaningful outputs that policymakers from the government can base on into creating God programs and activities which are more effective, efficient, and addresses the actual needs of these sectors. I now present the activities community of interests. First are interested individuals or groups, up to five members. The FOA team puts the discretion to each participant or group on choosing which hat to wear in participating for the activity. They may opt to represent their organization or continue as a private citizen. Second are women and LGBTQIA plus sector. The FOA team is encouraging the participation of the women and LGBTQIA plus sector mainly because they are the primary parties to this initiative and as the people belong to the sector who directly experience issues on inequality, they have the primary say. We also open the activity to individuals or teams belonging to other sectors. Third are people of age 16 to 40, especially the youth and young professionals. The FOI team is also particular with the support and participation of the, of the youth sector because we aim to capture up-to-date and innovative ideas and insights for the GAD agenda. Nevertheless, this activity is open for all ages. And fourth and last are people with basic, intermediate, or advanced knowledge in data science, economics, development studies, public finance, political science, public administration, journalism, and other similar fields. Naturally, it would also be an advantage to have the technical knowledge mentioned since this is a data quest activity. However, all participants having any type of knowledge is welcome. In gist, the list of communities of interest does not aim to limit our participants but instead point out and encourage these communities to join the activity. Moving forward, I will now explain the general mechanics of the contest. On the screen is a process flow containing the seven steps of participating in the data challenge activity. I will be explaining this one by one in the next slides. First is to research or request for point of interest datasets and information. GAD-related data is needed to join in this activity. As we advocate for smarter and more empowered citizens, not just in culture, but also in practice, interested participants must first acquire points of interest datasets either by submitting a Freedom of Information request using the electronic FOI portal at www.foi.gov.ph or through other existing government transparency initiatives which proactively disclose, disclose GAD data, or through any other means for as long as the source is credible and reliable enough to be able to produce a valid output. To help you in acquiring your needed GAD data and information, here's a brief introduction video about the Electronic Freedom of Information Portal and its functions and basic features. The purpose of the Freedom of Information Project Management Office in conducting campus caravans is to encourage our students to be able to utilize the FOI portal as a research tool. You have to go to www.foi.gov.ph, then create an account, you have to fill in the details, you attach your ID, then you verify your email address, then afterwards you can uh, choose your agency, then you ask your question. Simple as that. Pakalaking tulong sa amin na malaman yung mga galitong uh, bagay kasi especially that I'm also a journalist, mahalaga na makagagoy ka talaga yung mga totoong uh, information. 
Second is to develop outputs. From the information that will be provided, participants must analyze and visualize the data and, and come up with an analysis, proposal, and insights on gender mainstreaming or policy recommendations on how the government can utilize their GAD budgets efficiently vis-a-vis -vis the Philippine Commission on Women in National Economic and Development Authorities harmonized second are research proposals or project proposals. Third are short documentaries or audio-visual presentations. And fourth are data analysis, data storytelling or visualization or infographics projects. Again, I would like to highlight that the main objective of outputs is to communicate proposals and findings that may improve the budget allocation to and implementation of gender and development policies, programs, and projects. Third is to disseminate ongoing or finished outputs on social media. We all know that social media plays an important role in increasing an initiative's visibility, eliciting conversations, and building relationships with the public since it is easy to access and is being used by a lot of people. Hence, this step is relevant in achieving our objective to build deeper and broader understanding and appreciation of GAD data and to establish gender awareness on the ground. Posts can include text, images, infographics, Twitter threads, videos, etc. For the posts to be taken into account and for monitoring purposes, each post must include the hashtags, hashtag FOI for GAD, hashtag inform to empower, and hashtag opengov through FOI. Participants already started posting their ongoing or finished outputs last Monday, May 17, 2021. I would like to underline that social media posts beyond May 31 will not be accounted for. Fourth is to attend the workshops on gender mainstreaming and data storytelling during the 2021 Open Government Week celebration. To widen the knowledge of participants on the concept and practice of gender mainstreaming and data storytelling and help them in developing their chosen outputs, the FOI team rolled out the Gender Mainstreaming through FOI webinar last May 17, 2021 and the Data Storytelling Workshop yesterday, May 19, 2021, simultaneous with the Open Government Week celebration for this year. These activities are virtually conducted via Zoom teleconference. Our fifth step is to submit outputs to FOI PMO. Participants may already submit their outputs starting June 1, 2021, and on June 4 is the deadline of submission. Please note that we will only account entries submitted to the official email address of the Strategic Partnerships Unit of the Freedom of Information Project Management Office at foystratbar at gmail.com. Later, I will further discuss the general mechanics in the submission of outputs. Our sixth step is the online presentation and deliberation of outputs. To give the participants and the panel of judges a platform to interact and to convey their questions and clarifications with each other, an online presentation and deliberation of outputs is scheduled tentatively on June 7, 2021. This aims to make the judging process more transparent to our participants. The FOI team will provide more information about this activity in the following days, so please stay tuned to our official social media accounts. Our seventh and final step is the virtual announcement and awarding of winners. Tentatively scheduled on the third week of June via Zoom teleconference and Facebook Live, this event will be simulcasted to to FOI Philippines and other partners' official social media pages and other available media platforms. Just the same, we will provide more information and updates about this event in the following days, so please follow our official social media accounts. Let us now go to the nitty-gritty part of the discussion, which is the joining and selection process, announcement of winners, prizes, and general timeline of activities. The screen shows you the general joining process for the activity. 
Just to review what was discussed earlier, the contest is open to all interested individuals and groups with up to five members aged 16 to 40 years old. Our main communities of interests are women, groups, and members of the LGBTQIA community. Please register to bit.ly slash fy for god to officially join the contest. Each participant or group can submit strictly up to two entries only. And participants must refer to our topic or theme, Better Budget Data Quest, Integrating Transparency in Gender and Development. Again, Participants must comply with our deadline of submission of outputs on June 4, 2021, and they should send this to fystratpargmail.com following the email format which is shown on the screen. Moving forward, I will now discuss the joining process for each particular output. The table on the screen simplifies the instructions per output. I will elaborate on the papers and proposals first. Policy proposals, abstract research proposals, project proposals, and position papers should be original in form with in-text and or end-of-paper citations following the APA format and have not yet joined in any local and or international contests. These papers and proposals must be in the English language encoded double-spaced, and must provide the FOI team a copy in docs and PDF. Policy proposals must have a minimum of 800 words and a maximum of 1,200 1, words. Position papers must have a minimum of 800 words and a maximum of 1,000 words. Abstract research proposals must have a minimum of 400 words and a maximum of 600 words. The submitting author must be listed as the first author, and the chosen individual or team may be expected to submit a full paper in the format of a research report. And finally, project proposals must have a minimum of 1,300 words and a maximum of 2,000 words, and it should consist of an executive summary, clearly defined problems and solutions, deliverables, success criteria, project schedule, and estimated budget. Participants can also submit outputs in multimedia forms such as short documentaries, audio-visual presentation, and data analysis, storytelling, and visualization, and infographics projects. The FOI team will only accept multimedia project entries that are original in form and have not yet joined any local and or international contests. These multimedia project entries must be of high definition quality. However, short documentaries and audiovisual presentation must be in the format of AVI or MP4, while data analysis, storytelling and visualization and infographics projects must be in JPG or PNG. Short documentaries must have a running time of 10 minutes at least and 15 minutes at most, while audiovisual presentations must have 5 minutes at least and 8 minutes at most. Finally, data analysis, storytelling and visualization, and infographics projects should be a 3-5 to five page infographic and must follow a 1080 by 1080 dimension and should be accompanied by a 200-word summary of the infographic content. For the selection process, the FOI team will be seeking the help of a panel of three to seven judges from the government, civil society organizations, development partners, and private sector to, to determine which output should win the contest. They will award points to each participant or team based on the four aspects. 30 points for depth of analysis, 40 points for usefulness and possible impact of findings and insights, 20 points for creativity and innovation, and 10 points for dissemination and marketing strategy. Each aspect follows a set of specific guide questions to effectively determine the points to be given to the participants' outputs. You may review the guide questions by visiting this link bit.ly 
slash info dash FOI for GAD 2021. For the prizes, the FOI team will be gif giving gift certificates and or cash prizes, certificates and plaques of recognition, FOI merchandise, and a 400 US dollars worth of course on data mining or design software usage or online capacity building or training sponsored by GIFT. And just some final reminders for the selection process. The decision of the judges shall be final. All entries shall be considered property of FYPMO and may be used by the organization for publication in any other legal purpose. And lastly, all winners will be notified by FYPMO through email and phone call. To help the participants in marking their calendars, shown on the screen is the timeline of the contest. From April 12 to May 17, the FOI team facilitated the online registration of interested participants. Last May 11, 12, and 14, the FOI team conducted a series of virtual orientations for the participants with the objective of further explaining the full details and mechanics of the contest and addressing their questions, comments, clarifications regarding the data quest activity. Last May 17 and 19, FOI PMO conducted a gender mainstreaming webinar and data storytelling workshop, which is simultaneous in the 2021 Open Government Week celebration. The development and posting of outputs on social media also started last Monday, May 17, and will run until May 31. Participants shall formally submit their outputs on June 1 until June 4. Tentatively scheduled on June 7 and on the third week of June and are the online presentation and deliberation of outputs and local winners' announcement, respectively. At this juncture, I would like to thank everyone who attended this activity launch and for giving me the opportunity to discuss the Better Budget Data Quest, Integrating Transparency in Gender and Development on behalf of the Freedom of Information Project Management Office of the Presidential Communications Operations Office. I hope that this helps in your understanding and appreciation of the contest. I would also like to grab this minute to announce that we are extending the online registration for the contest. Flash on the screen are the links to the registration and the activities details and mechanics. I am enjoining you all to visit them. Muli, maraming salamat po sa oportunidad na ito at sama-sama Ama po nating isulong ang isang mas transparent at accountable na gobyerno. Thank you very much, Ella, for that um, presentation. Uh, for just to just join in in our conversation, uh, what has just been presented by Ella is the mechanics of how the citizens can participate in the FOI for God Better Budget Data Quest. So. Uh, guys, if you were not able to take down notes, important uh, reminders and um, key points from what has been presented, you may visit the FOI Facebook page. It's already in your chat box. So just click the link. And uh, please note that the registration for the Better Budget Data Quest is extended until tomorrow, May 21, 2021. So if you're interested, grab the chance. And who knows, you might be able uh, to help the government as well in promoting fiscal transparency on gender and development and some perks to win the contest. So thank you very much, Ella. Later, we will be joined by Ella and Hennessy of the FOIPMO to help us answer and shed light on your questions regarding their contest. Now, uh, think, uh, I believe our uh, colleagues from FOI are also undertaking the same open government week activities since uh, this celebration if I may inform you, is a celebration undertaken by different countries, 78 member countries of the Open Government Partnership since last Monday, May 17, until tomorrow, May, 7, 20, uh, May 21, 2021. So, uh, yeah, so please drop in your questions and um, clarifications and any thoughts about the presentation, and later we will uh, answer that during the Open Forum. Next on our list is the program officer of the Department of Budget and Management. 
uh, Department of the Interior and Local Government, rather. He, she is part of the Support the Local Government program. And to tell us more about the program on development life or dev life and how this civic technology initiative can fasten the citizens' engagement, I am giving you Ms. Jeanette Bakulfo from the DILG. Jenny, take it away. Uh, thank you so much for that, Robin. Um, I'm asking my colleague Nigel to please uh, start sharing your screen. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, maayong buntag sa tanan na nakikinig po sa atin. Uh, for all of us that need to Zoom and to everyone that is joining us via uh, the Facebook Live. So first of all, before I start, I would like uh, to thank the composite team of the PHOGP Secretariat headed by Assistant Secretary Rolando Utoledo for all their efforts in coordinating and organizing this event. Um, second, I also wish to thank our partners in government, uh, the DBM and the PCOO for being our steady partners in implementing transparency and accountability initiatives. And lastly, um, I wish to thank the CSOs, the LGUs, our various partner agencies, and the rest of the participants for carving the time to join us here to listen and participate in this virtual event. So I'm Jeanette Bakulfo, I am from the DILG, and I'm here to discuss uh, one of the activities, the Philippines, um, in partnership with uh, the DBM and the PCOO has jointly undertaken in this year's gift user engagement activities. So uh, next slide, please. So before I start, um, next slide, uh, let me share with you um, today's agenda or uh, well, at least in the next 20 minutes what I am presenting. So I will discuss with you um, what is DevLive or what is Development Live, um, why, what is the contest all about and who can join, how can you join, uh, what are the entry requirements and how do we select the winners and what are the prices. Next slide, please. So as uh, we go through my presentations, I am sure that uh, you will have questions or clarifications. So please feel free to choose, uh, please feel free to use the chat box or the comment section for those who are joining us in the Facebook Live. And then we will go through these questions during the Q&A. So now let's get started. Uh, so next slide, please. So, what is Development Live? So let me start uh, by defining civic technology in the perspective of governance. So compared to other civic tech innovations or compared to other tech innovations, which include a wide range of technologies designed uh, to provide governments and to provide to the government to increase their uh, efficiency in their day-to-day -day operations. Uh, civic tech has its focus on informing, engaging, and connecting citizens with their government to improve the public good. So given this, uh, I would like to cite that our department has been working closely with the UNDP in developing a civic tech. So it's a technology that, it's, that is very easy to use and will be able to provide real-time information on government projects within a few tabs. So we call it Development Live or DevLive. So the premise of DevLive is centered on using technology such as your mobile phones or a mobile app in partnering with citizens as able partners in ensuring that local government units deliver quality and better services. So DevLive is an Android-based app that enables citizens to submit their satisfaction feedback on the quality and implementation of infrastructure projects. So DevLive brings engagement and participation directly to the citizens. So how does DevLive work? Next slide, please. So the DILG recognizes citizens play a crucial role in identifying implementation issues, inefficiencies, and even leakages in government-funded infrastructure projects. Next, please. 
So ilan po ba sa atin dito ang mga nakakakita na ng mga lubak-lubak na daan sa ating mga munisipyo but we don't know where to air these uh, issues. no Next please. So uh, DevLive was created as a means to give citizen a voice in channeling and communicating their feedback on infrastructure projects to local administrators. So through DevLive, Next, please. Citizens now has the capacity and confidence to inform the government of their needs, and now and the government then has now an added avenue to listen and to respond to these needs. So next, please. So when you use DevLive, uh, you can communicate your issues, infra infrastructure issues, and then we connect this to local administrators near you. Next, please. So. Uh, in advocating citizen participation through getting their feedbacks, so we embrace the importance uh, of government, government response to deliver results. So we ask their feedback, therefore we should work on this feedback. So next slide. So Papaano, how do we do this? Um, so next slide. So the DevLive the dev system has um, integrity measures in ensuring that we deliver results to the citizens. So DevLive has a response mechanism embedded in its system. So this is to fulfill the promise of closing the feedback loop between the government and the citizens. So the government also commits to respond to this feedback within 15 working days uh, upon the receipt of these feedbacks. So the DevLive also has an automated flagging system. So this feature allows our field office, offices to prioritize which feedback to address first. So green flag indicates that the project is healthy, yellow indicates that the project satisfaction is at risk, and red means that the project implementation is problematic and must therefore be viewed and responded to immediately. So also in citizen feedbacking, uh, trust between the institution and the citizens is of utmost importance. So in DevLive, we ensure that all of citizens information or identity remain safe and secure. So the local government units will never be apprised of who gave them feedback. So next, uh, DevLive also has the following features uh, towards optimizing citizen feedback in making sure that we get correct and valid feedback report from the ground. So to ensure validity of feedbacks and to avoid fake reports, uh, feedbacks submitted through DevLive are moderated and validated by the DILG regional offices. So, and then the app also has a camera feature uh, that allows users to submit geotag photos. So this uh, security feature is a key component in validating feedback as it collect data on where the photo was taken. So when you submit a feedback, you will be asked uh, to attach a photo. So upon attaching a photo uh, in your feedback form, the DevLive app will prompt uh, its users to use the camera feature. So this way, we ensure that the photo submitted to us was taken using the DevLive camera app and then the users won't be able to upload photos saved in their phone galleries, uh, thereby eliminating concerns of possible fake photos. Uh, next slide, please. So here is a, a quick overview of DevLive's key features. So you will be uh, able to search for nearby government projects. So these are projects that are enrolled in the DevLive system. And then you will get pertinent information such as progress status, uh, budget allocation, and location of the project. Um, we're also working on expanding this information to include uh, contractor, what, how, who, how much is the contracted amount, and then when is the target completion of this project. And then you'll be able to submit satisfaction feedback on these projects. And then it also works offline. So as long as you have already registered, they downloaded and have already registered in the DevLive app, as you go to um, far-flung areas where internet connection is 
low or slow uh, dev live you can still access the dev live app and a uh, draft your feedback form because it works offline and then you're able to upload photos and videos um, to attach in your forms and then you can track the feedback response um, who's answering the feedback and the status of feedback natin, um, what is the government's response to your feedback and then you also you, you you can also link your reports to your social media accounts uh, next slide please so um, here are uh, the variables or the themes uh, that uh, you will be asked uh, to answer uh, when you submit your satisfaction feedback. So we made, made this very simple, um, just uh, key themes uh, to get uh, how the citizens feel on these projects. So if it's the project there, um, are they satisfied with its functionality? What about the quality of this project? Is it very accessible? Um, are you satisfied with the timeliness on how, on how this was implemented? Um, does the community feel its relevance? And how is the LGU maintaining its maintenance? No. So next slide. So currently, um, we have a total amount of 31.1 billion pesos uh, or uh, for assistance to municipalities project under the DILG program. So we have road projects, um, we have water supply projects, we have DRRM facility projects and health facility projects. Um, we are working on expanding this portfolio and also include big, big ticket projects uh, that are being monitored by Project Dime uh, to be included uh, in the DevLab system. So, if a government's program is enrolled in the DevLive system, then the citizens or anyone who has the DevLive app can provide feedback on these projects. And next slide, please. So uh, given this, um, what is the connection to GIPS initiative? So what is the contest all about? So as uh, mentioned by Ella and Robin earlier, um, there are two <clears throat> initiatives that uh, that gift has. So you have the Better Budget Data Quest, uh, which is being hosted by the PCOO. And then we have the Data Rally from Home for Public Infrastructure that's being hosted by the DBM and the DILG. So next slide. So for the data, hashtag data rally from home. So citizens are invited to evaluate projects that have budget contracting and other information available to them. And then participants are asked to document their findings via their social media accounts. So if you have Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, so uh, you will be able to document and share your findings uh, through, these, uh, through these platforms. So given that, uh, next slide. Um, we are hosting uh, the hashtag data rally from home uh, initiative. So we call it pictures as means of engagement, uh, capturing accountability and transparency through the lens of every Filipino. So with this, um, we marry citizen participation with our, using DevLive with the data rally from home. So you're able to uh, monitor infrastructure projects near you, uh, provide satis satisfaction feedback on these projects, and then you'll be able to join uh, the host, uh, the, the gift activity that we are hosting. So uh, how do you do about this? So you monitor uh, infrastructure projects using your DevLive app, and then you share to, to the social media platforms that picture that you took. So remember, um, when you submit the feedback, you will be asked uh, to attach a photo. So with this, um, with this picture as means of engagement activity, we'll be asking you to share to the social media accounts the photos that you took. And then simply you just use the hashtag, uh, hashtag devlifeph, hashtag opengovph, hashtag goodgovph, and hashtag data rally from home to make sure that your profile and make sure that your profiles are set to public. So that's basically the, the activity that we are hosting. So we marry participation uh, and engagement through the DevLive app with this initiative. So next slide. So who can join? 
So the activity is open to all Filipinos from 18 to 65 years old as long as you have an Android phone. Um, participants must not be uh, employees of uh, participating agencies such as the DBM and the DILG and the identified representatives from the non-government secretariat of the OGP. So uh, apart from that, anyone can join. Um, next slide. So what are your entry requirements? No, so it's so uh, we're this since this is a photo contest and that we are using a mobile phone for this. So the your photos should be taken uh, using a mobile device. And then um, the photo should be uh, a project should be enrolled in the DevLab app. Yung subject po na photo natin. Your photograph should be in full color. Uh, it should be in landscape orientation and it should be in digital format. Now, these are the following uh, requirements naman on photographs that should not contain the following. So it should not have watermarks or any identifying marks. Uh, it should not have been previously submitted or have been selected as a winner in any um, photography contest. And it should not contain images of any elected government official or prospective candidate in the upcoming election. So uh, your main focus on your photograph should be the infrastructure project only. Um, next, um, uh, entries, uh, when you share your entries in your social media platform, um, you should have a short description of how the, your project has impacted your community. And then make sure that your social media account is in public so that um, we can see your entry when we uh, search through the hashtags. And then make sure that um, you have a, submitted a feedback via DevLive uh, when you post your photo of that project. And then submission must be uh, done by the first, uh, twen uh, from the first until the 25th day of the month. Sorry, uh, my bad. This should be from May, May 1 to 25 until November 1. November 1 to November 25 of 2021. So the contest runs from May to November. And then entry submitted after the cutoff date will be drawn in the following cycle. Ah, next slide, please. So what are the judging criteria? So first, um, it should have a visual appeal, um, uh, artistic value, use of technique and creativity. And then uh, your message or your content, this is your... Um, caption in your post. Uh, it should be able to convey your message or idea in the caption. And then the composition of the photo, the placement of the subject matter, and then the absence of distracting elements. And then next, the overall impression or the wow factor of your photo. Next slide. So uh, when you submit your entry, please don't forget to use the hashtags, um, hashtag devlifeph, Hashtag GoodGovPH, hashtag OpenGovPH, hashtag Data Rally from Home, and hashtag Project PH. So make sure that when you use the hashtag or when you submit your entries, your profile is in public format or in public format. Yes. Next slide. So the selection process, so there will be two winners every month starting from May until November 31, 2021. So the contest run for seven months. And then winners will be selected through a panel of judges com that judges composed uh, by the DILG, the DBM, and two representatives from the non-gov secretariat of the OGP partnership. Um, prices. So we will be um, giving out um, cash prizes and then merchandise from our um, gov from our non-gov or government partners. Um, we are uh, talking uh, with the UNDP, um, with the DBM, and maybe possibly with the PCOO uh, to give uh, winners um, merchandise. So we will send this to you um, if you are one of the winners drawn monthly. So next slide. So if you have questions or clarifications, please do let us know. Um, get in touch with us. Um, you, ca you can um, send to us uh, in the chat box your questions, and then um, we will get to them during the Q&A. So next slide, please. 
So that's all from me. Uh, I hope that uh, for all of you listening, if you have an Android phone, um, you can download DevLive uh, in the Google Play Store. It's free and it's now available. And do please uh, join us in this uh, hashtag data rally from home photo contest. Thank you. And back to you, Robin. Thank you very much, Jeanette, for that uh, presentation on uh, data, uh, data Rally from Home. So, uh, guys, if I were you, if you have your mobile phone, so if you have your Android phone, you can check out the DevLive app so that you can uh, you may be interested to join in this app contest. So, uh, now that uh, we have uh, come to... Uh, we have come to the most exciting part of the session. I know you have a lot of questions to ask from our resource speakers. Now uh, we're moving on to the open forum. So Kanina, as our presenters are sharing their programs, we are receiving questions from Zoom, uh, from uh, different platforms. And so let me acknowledge it one by one. So don't forget still to key in your questions and uh, our guests would be glad to answer them. So. All right, so first let me acknowledge one comment. I think Sir Santi mentioned this uh, competitive contest approach to encourage citizens' engagement in local development projects is a noble experiment worth pursuing. This approach hopefully will meet our gadget oriented millennials to be actively concerned citizens. And perhaps more than the old years, the millennial generations, after all, is our greater hope and potential for a wider engaged citizen. We, I couldn't agree more to Sir Santi. Yes, that's correct. Uh, using our, most of the time, uh, based on uh, studies, we have been engaging in our daily activities, mostly yung screen time natin, nasa mobile phones. And uh, that uh, uh, alone is a major uh, factor. That, that's why the DALG PCOO uh, in, uh, uh, have participated in this gift user engagement activity. So, um, so, all right, so let me start one. I, I, I think I received an advanced question for DILG. So DILG, you mentioned that the development live uh, is available on Google Play. Is it available also on Apple App Store or is it that through online uh, a Google Play app on Jeanette, can, can you answer that question, please? Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much for that question. Um, unfortunately, for now, for now, um, the DevLive app is only available uh, at the Google Play Store. Um, the UNDP is working on uh, applying uh, for it to be available to iOS devices, uh, but medyo uh, natatagalan tayo kasi they're very strict. Um, for apps na ina-upload, lalo na if uh, it's also connected with uh, government data. Uh, but for now, um, we are available only at the Google Play Store. All right. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much for that. So for now, folks, it's only available via Google Play App Store. So it will be soon once uh, the, the, the partnership is done or the requirements for the Apple iOS, uh, it will soon be available through that platform. So thank you very much for that clarification. Actually, it's uh, uh, there's also another advanced question sent during the registration for DILG as well. Can we see all infrastructure related expenses through your platform to the deadline? Okay, can we see uh, yeah, infrastructure related expenses? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question, Robin? All right, the advanced questions is on, can we see infrastructure-related expenses through your platform? Uh, okay, so what currently is being available in the DevLive app is the budget allocation. So how much has been um, expended from the national government, uh, from the GAA? Um, and then uh, next is we're working on expanding this to how much is the contracted amount, uh, meaning uh, pag dumaan na sa procurement process, how much was the final uh, contracted amount. Um, as to the uh, financial expenditure per uh, obligation or expended rate, um, um, it's not available in the site. Uh, what we have are uh, the budget allocation and then soon to be the contracted amount. All right. So uh, okay, thank you very much for that uh, question, uh, for that answer, Janet. Now I'm I'm I'd like to call on our representative.
representatives from Yip. Uh, with, uh, I, I received a private message about uh, asking, can you share a little, uh, a little more about uh, some examples of what other countries are doing uh, on this engagement, user engagement and activity? Maybe one or two examples from other countries that are uh, also undertaking the same activity. Uh, maybe, maybe we can have Aura or JP, if are you still here? Yes, I'm happy to take that question. Um, All right, Laura. Okay. Yes. So right now we have several governments around the world doing this, and but for some years now there's some experience uh, in the international realm. Uh, the founder of this type of exercises was our, one of other of, of our lead stewards, Mexico. So they this year are engaging. Uh, they engaged in a similar activity through social media, uh, a rally from home, but they combined it as well with the data quest. That was very interesting as well because they com combined the target sectors in a very similar um, role, uh, roadmap, let's say, like the one that was presented. So it, it, it was very interesting how participants combined them their, their knowledge about the, the, the about specific topics such as gender, climate change, or health services with something that uh, most participants didn't know a lot about, which is uh, fiscal data, right? So the what's very very interesting that they get, got to use got to use the fiscal data and actually combine it and make purposeful interventions on policy of their interest. It was also very nice to see in that exercise this year that we got a lot of more uh, data-driven um, participants so that the youth, uh, I, I encourage everyone uh, from the, age, the the youth sector and the participants are, that are watching this to, to, to engage. You'll find the data provided and the um, information that the, the, the ministries are putting out there very interesting and thought provoking, which is sometimes something that you probably don't think that's as, as very um, interesting to delve yourself into. I promise that it would be, and I promise that uh, it would be very interesting. Another initiative right now undergoing is uh, also in the Latin American country, Costa Rica. Um, they are doing their open budget school which finishes, uh, it's, a, it's a long process such as the DevLive um, initiative that goes through most of the year with uh, participants being educated and introduced to topics of budget uh, as well as to how to use it. And at the end, they get the chance to have specific projects deriving from their experience. So I think oh, this is much more similar to DevLive initiative, which you have a lot, a lot of time to engage and to be um, using this information to at the end be, uh, have a very interesting product. Um, I think those two examples are the ones that come to mind we're seeing these initiatives and thank you very much for that question as well as congratulations to uh, the teams and I encourage all our viewers to engage in these initiatives. It, and you have something for each. You have something for the most creative minds and also something for the most data-driven or policy-oriented minds. So there's everything, something for everyone to engage. Thank, thank you, Aura. Thank you. Uh, Robin, so I, allow, uh, allow me to, to share two examples in two sentences that uh, come to mind. In Argentina, in the data quest, they analyzed how much money was spent uh, to address uh, domestic violence. And they found out that it was very little. And that didn't match with the government's uh, in, uh, speech and with the government's commitment to the issue. And they were able to contrast how little money with the political investment. And the next year, the government, of course, took into consideration that and, and uh, allocated more resources to that specific program. So it, the government wasn't aware about this mismatch. In Chile, the rally uh, of supervising public infrastructure took the whole uh, supervision system from the Controller General to change to make sure that there were more 
monitoring processes because many citizens uh, revealed that um, some of the works were much less developed than what the reports were showing. So uh, it can get not only exciting as you have plan uh, as you have uh, proposed and as you have planned, but it can also have very interesting dialogues that also serve the purpose of government to do better their job. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, JP, for that rejoinder and also Aura for the uh, answers. So now, uh, before I acknowledge one question I saw on, on, on Zoom chat box, so let me first uh, call on PCOO. We have Ella or Hennessy over there. Uh, there is this advanced, uh, advanced questions uh, sent to us. Clarification on what are other channels that the citizens can use to participate in their data quest activities apart from the FOI portal. And if I'm not mistaken, one of the highlighted uh, discussions uh, presentation earlier was uh, the citizens may uh, may uh, would uh, the citizens would have to uh, request information through the FOI portal and other platforms that can be uh, that can serve as their uh, entry point going to the FYI uh, data quest. So uh, maybe you can share with us uh, some concrete uh, government uh, entry points that the citizens can uh, participate. Hello, um, good morning to everyone. I am Melly K. Uzawa. No? Thank you, Robin. So, um, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. I'm Melly K. Uzawa, no? um, one of the engagement officers of the FOI PMO. So, I form part of uh, the Strategic Partnership Unit, Partnership Unit with Ella and Pearl. So, my colleagues are not here, but I'm uh, happily here to happen to respond to your questions. So, as to that first question, Robin, um, Aside from us so encouraging everyone to please maximize the FDFOI portal and also um, be the standard request. Well, also we discourage, however, you know, the use of the standard request given the pandemic. You know, as long as the participants extract uh, reliable sources, uh, reliable information from reliable sources, it's all fine. You know, as long as they uh, will be able to properly cite that you know, in their chosen output, in their preferred chosen output. So, yun. Um, they can also check the EFOI portal. Let me just uh, share that with you in a while. Um, no, uh, uh, to check no other requests that have already been lodged by other uh, requestors, no, uh, proactively or actively disclosed by the agent, by the concerned agent. All right. So, thank you very much uh, for that, Ness. Of course, the citizens can make use of other legit sources, but of course, we would like to encourage participation of everyone to use our FOI because we, we wanted to know you, you uh, please know your better know your government better so uh, I'd like to acknowledge the next question uh, sent by a uh, zoom uh, chat box from Sir Edward Katakusan uh, this I think is for uh, the ALG what protection do citizens have when they are going to report feedbacks on the discrepancy or lapses of their own municipality the deadline up considering that red tagging is a very very rampant these days. Okay, um, thank you so much for that question, sir. So um, when you register in the DevLive app, all your information goes to the back end of the system. So uh, the LGU does not have access to those information. So what happens is, um, since this is a um, joint partnership with the UNDP, so see LGU has no access uh, to this data. So what they will be getting is, um, uh, the reports or the summary or the reports that the citizen submitted, and then they will be asked to reply. So uh, in terms of um, data, um, personal information, um, the LG has no, no access to this data. So it's in the back end ng talaga ng dev life. All right, thank you very much for that answer, Jeanette. I think may rejoin there si Sir, 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 Sir Santi in Zoom chat box. By the way, Sir Santi po is our alternate chair for non-government CSO steering committee of the Philippine Open Government. He mentioned um, the citizen or the citizens reporting may precisely wish to be uh, identified for a greater opportunity for collaborative dialogue on common concerns. There can be protection if the reporter is a group or even a coalition of groups, local and national. So this is where the CSO United efforts are required. 
I I couldn't agree more again to Sir Santi. We we are all in this together, especially the CSOs. You can form your groups and uh and and make use of the platform and be part of the uh part of the uh, citizens monitoring to improve the government better. So I'd like to move back to uh PCOO. Uh, there's this question about. Uh, as 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 you would know, uh, the agencies are given 20 days to respond to an FOI request, and uh, it can be extended up to 35 days, 35 working days, depending on how complex the request is. So, uh, what what assistance does the FOI can uh, PMO can extend to the participants so to make sure that the request will be uh, provided as soon as soon as possible, because that would affect. Uh, their uh, participation in 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 your uh, FOI for God contest. Thank you, Robin. Well, we uh, considering the possible complex request that may affect the data gathering of the GAD participants and uh, the timeline itself of the data challenge activity of our office. Aside from encouraging our participants to really extract reliable resources, uh, reliable. Uh, information from reliable sources online. What our office can do or uh, no, to help the participants to, to expedite no, your request nila is to reach uh, reach us no via our FOI chat for gmail.com and we'll help you follow up with your con uh, your request no large with large to the concerned agencies if it's large via the EFOI portal. And then um, we can also help you, uh, you know, check other requests you know, proactively and are uh, reactively disclosed by the concerned agencies in which the request uh, requests have been directed to. All right. So uh, the FO Robin? yeah, yeah, I, I got it. So so the FOI PMO are uh, will uh, is glad to 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 help our uh, participating uh, uh, citizens on following up the request to our. Uh, uh, through the uh, FOI portal. So uh, let, let me get back again to, I think, Aura or JPG. Uh, forget the presentations today highlighted tech-related initiatives, primarily targeting millennials. So uh, is there uh, any initiative that you can share which utilizes less technology or partly offline? Um, or are 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 you still there, or are you muted? Yes, sorry, I couldn't hear the question. My connection was spotty. All right, so let 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 me let me uh tell let let me tell you the question again. So the presentations uh, presentations uh today highlighted some top technical technology initiatives. So that's primarily targets the millennials. So can you share just at least one example? That uh, uh, initiative that utilizes less technology or partly offline. Yes, I guess this uh, partly offline um, initiative was uh, specifically before the pandemic scenario. Most of our initiatives were handled first uh, in an offline version and then went online. But also the Costa Rica example of the Better Budget Data School that ends up with specific projects is based primarily offline and, and now to, and, and moved to, to online audiences. Um, also, as Juan Pablo mentioned, the example from Argentina, it, that um, situation back then was hosted through a single data hackathon, let's say, or data quest was a single day event where everything happened in an intensive marathonic um, quest for a particular point. So though I think whereas before we had a lot of opportunities of being a, a bit more offline, these online opportunities such as Dev Live that you can have in your phone, but you can also be there and check on the infrastructure, it's, it's a good combination and also what the, offline, uh, the online opportunities give to participants is the chance to have a bit more time, which in turn results with, uh, we've seen in the, in, in the efforts that are primarily online that more times uh, provide for more insightful um, policy recommendations and um, findings from participants. So that, that, that I think will be very beneficial as well to take into account uh, when when make when transitioning online and also as Juan Pablo mentioned, probably would uh, derive in more impactful participations from the the contestants. 
Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ara. In fact, in this situation that we are in, into the new normal uh, right now, leveraging technology is also important so that uh, uh, there is a continuity of on part of the citizens where they can still participate in monitoring uh, government programs. Thank you very much that, for that, Ara. Um, I, I would like to, to read again Sir Santi's uh, commentary on another point. Although uh, I understand the need for anonymity in reporting, let this be, um, let this matter be a choice of the reporter. The initiator of the feedback may wish to be made available to further advance his or her demand for better delivery of services. Yes, yes. Thank you for that, Pastor Santi. So now, um, for PCOO and VILG, on the contest mechanics, uh, moving back to the contest mechanics, so how do we ensure that uh, the transparency in selecting winners? Uh, I, I think and Ness was able to, uh, 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 to uh, yeah, PCO was able to explain this earlier, but uh, let me let me call on PCO again to to tell us how and uh, how transparency will be ensured in in, in selecting winners. Ness, uh, thank you, Robin. No, so if you're with us, no, in our discussion yesterday and also last Monday, uh, May seventeen, we've invited uh, several the partners from CSO and also government how to ensure the process of really a competent and uh, decomposed output that output that have been um uh submitted to us no uh will be having we, we, we invited uh judges for each category and then um yeah for the selection process so we we take note of the please can you take note also of the uh, uh criteria and also its corresponding points that we set out so primarily in response to your question robin um to secure really the uh, the selection process you know the competent and also fair selection process we invited the, uh uh, judges from the government sector and also from the CSO sector, uh, primarily the, the LGBTQ plus community and also the women sector, just to secure that since considering that these uh, sector you know, are primarily the ones experienced by quality issues, as my colleague mentioned, Ella, uh, as my uh, colleague Ella mentioned, you know, uh, will be invited, will be inviting them for the deliberation of the output submitted to us. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ness, for that uh, answer. Now, uh, how about uh, for the DILG? I think we have uh, Jeanette on board. Jeanette? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Robin, for that question. So same with uh, PCOO selection process. Um, we also invited... Uh, uh, representatives from the non-government non uh, to help in the judging process of the submitted photos. Um, we will be uh, selecting this from the 20, 25 onwards and then we post uh, the winners uh, in our Facebook pages. And then the good thing also is um, the, the, the entries are all available online. So um, if you use uh, the hashtags, then you, everyone can see uh, the, what the entries are or what uh, the citizens have been submitting. Uh, so it's all open uh, for everyone to see and to check uh, the current entries uh, in this photo contest. And then we also make sure that uh, in terms of transparency, uh, all um, we have excluded our officers uh, from the ground and from the uh, uh, DILG and the DBM for joining uh, to make way of, uh, you know, uh, for everyone to join since they have access to these uh, projects or locations. So we have excluded that. So in terms of um, par participation and openness, um, available uh, for everyone to join. So I think that's all from my end. Back to you, Robin. Right. Thank you very much, Janet. And I think both agencies, the DB, uh, both uh, parties, DPM, DILG, and PCOO, uh, they are pretty much engaged with and uh, uh, and with tapping the non-government uh, organizations, the CSO, so that uh, uh, there is an equal representation when it comes to this kind of activities. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I think there are no more questions coming in from the ground, from the Zoom, and, and from the Facebook. So let me now. Uh, proceed with uh, what I have mentioned uh, earlier. The uh, kanina, um, kanina, as our presenters are sharing their programs, so uh, as I had mentioned then in, in the opening of this session, we have something 
uh, prepared or in store for you uh, a little gift, not the, not the actual global initiative for fiscal transparency, but of course, to thank you all for participating in this session. So, all right. So here's the mini contest, the mechanics of the mini contest. So first, uh, may we request everyone uh, if you're if you're uh, available to register either through FOI portal or the development live. So let me first walk you through with the FOI. So register through either FOI portal and then uh, and as you can see on the screen, just click on the create account. And then upon creating the account, it will direct you to go through your email to verify your uh, registration. And then upon verification, you will uh, receive um, a notification that your email address has been verified. So that one, that screenshot saying that your email address has been verified, you can use that in posting it through online for our uh, contest just for this, uh, for this session. And then for Dev Live, just go to Development Live app in Google Play Store. Just click, uh, just click the Dev Live and then have it installed. Register and key in your information. Um, upon uh, upon uh, successful registration, you may notice in your uh, in your account that you have been uh, fully registered, uh, showing your email addresses into your mobile app. Now, once you register, take a screenshot of your successful registration, post it in your Facebook page and put a caption on what you have learned from this session and key takeaways for your thoughts about the dev life and FOI for God. Now, this is not the actual contest yet for, uh, as, as presented by PCOO and DILG uh, earlier. No? So this is just a, a mini contest to start off uh, our our uh, engagement. All right, so remember to set your post in public. Of course, tag the PHOGP Facebook page. So that's facebook.com slash opengovph and include the three hashtags opengovweek, hashtag FOI for God, and hashtag devline. So how do you qualify for the mini contest? So only entries posted with caption and hashtag after this session, that's going to be on 12 noon, will be considered. First 20 qualified entries uh, only will be selected. So there will be 10 posts related to DevLive and uh, 10 posts related to FOI for God. So please, there's, uh, there should be no two winners under the same account user, meaning I for myself, I cannot, uh, I cannot post, um, I, can, I cannot be qualified uh, to both Dev Live and FOI. So you have to choose one, but you are not limited to post as many as you can. So, okay, so here's the mechanics. Uh, just, just a reminder. So first, screenshot of your successful registration, of course, with caption, with hashtags, tagging PHOGP Facebook page, and uh, consider that entries should only be counted 12 noon onwards or right after this session. And then, of course, for data privacy, you may tamper any contact information that you don't want to share on public, uh, well, basically apart from your name. And we can uh, verify that naman through uh, our uh, back-end uh, processes. So since this is a contest, we don't want you, we don't want to waste your time just, just posting and posting and posting. But uh, of course, um, Selecting the winners, uh, they will be announced through the page OGP Facebook page, and the secretariat will get in touch to the winner via Facebook uh, Messenger. And then, so here are the prices. So for Dev Live, you'll get uh, you uh, we will select ten winners of GCash worth hundred pesos each, and for the FOI, we'll be giving out FOI merchandise to ten qualified winners. So. Uh, uh, take note of that. 10 winners of GCAS work, 100 pesos, and 10 winners of FOI merchandise, as, as you can see, and as flash on the skin. Okay, so not just that. All 20 winners will also receive the PHOGP laptop bag. May I just remind, this is just a laptop bag with, without laptop. So don't, don't expect that there will be laptop inside the bag. So but that's, that's a cool one. That's a cool gift to receive. So please participate in this uh, in this uh, activity. 
Okay, so uh, we will also be posting these mechanics online so that you can still be guided throughout the throughout the contest. So reminder lang, you may, you may start posting your entries in the PHOGP page starting or your true personal pages through, uh, through uh, until uh, starting 12 noon. So you can still register now. You may now register through the dev live. You may register to the FOI portal right now, but posting your entries should be 12 noon onwards. So, okay. Thank you very much. And now we have come up uh, since uh, Kanin, uh, we've opened the session through Asset Rolly. So now we're moving on to the closing message by no less than the Undersecretary of the Local Government of the Department of the Interior and Local Government, Undersecretary Mario L. Kirin. To all our colleagues in government, our partners from the civil society and non-government organizations, to one and all, good morning. I would like to take this time to thank everyone who participated in today's webinar session. We appreciate the time you have spent with us during this discussion. And I hope you are all healthy and safe wherever you might be as you tune in to our event. Today, we launched two initiatives in solidarity with the Global Initiative for Fiscal Transparency. The first one, hashtag better budget data quest for sustainable development. And the other one, public infrastructure, hashtag data rally from home. We hope that you actively support and participate in these initiatives and help us create a better culture of accountability and transparency in governance. Indeed, it warms the heart to see that despite the ever-present threat that COVID-19 poses, many Filipinos are still ready and willing to participate in activities that promote good governance. I guess it shouldn't be surprising. After all, the Philippines has a long and distinguished reputation of harboring a strong and active civil society. In turn, Philippine government through the years has also been a firm supporter of participatory governance. In fact, the Philippines was one of the eight founding members of Open Government Partnership way back in 2011. In these uncertain times, transparent, accountable, and participatory governance more than ever are tenets crucial to the successful recovery and development of our country. Rest assured that the government remains firm in its commitment to uphold OGP values and support activities that foster improved access to information, civic participation, public accountability, and the leveraging technology and innovation for openness and accountability. Indeed, various national government agencies continue to pledge programs to the PH OGP National Action Plan, which is currently on its fifth iteration. The DILG and the DBM in particular have pledged in the 2019 to 2022 Philippine National Action Plan to strengthen citizen participation in governmental processes. Both agencies have worked hand in hand to roll out programs like the Dagyao Open Government Town Halls and capacity development of local civil society organizations, which put citizen participation and empowerment at its forefront. DevLive itself, which we are launching today, under the banner of hashtag data rally from home is a commitment listed in the PH OGP National Action Plan. In closing, let me thank you once again for your active participation in today's event. We hope that you never tire working with us in the government to find new and innovative ways to improve our country's future. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary Mario in Iringan for that closing message. So before we end, uh, formally end this session, may I request everyone to kindly turn on your cameras for our new normal photo off so that we can have something to post on social media since this is the new way of how we can, uh, uh, how, how we can group, start, do the uh, photo off unlike the usual way of gathering around since there's a physical distancing, social distancing, uh, imposed right now so let me let me request everyone to please turn on your cameras and the secretariat will be glad to take our photos so okay so who's gonna taking photos secretariat please erica can you take the photo hi sir santi good uh, good morning all right, so on the count of three, 
Uh, one, two, three. All right. So thank you very much for participating, folks. Uh, let me just um, remind everyone that uh, in order to receive your certificate of participation, uh, e-certificate participation, please accomplish the feedback or post-event feedback form via bit.ly bit dash d4 underscore s1 underscore feedback. Uh, uh, and uh, let us know how we can improve more our services in the coming in the coming activities. So I think the Secretariat also uh, chat in the feedback form. Just copy that uh, link, and then uh, you can uh, direct can be directed to the feedback form. And of course, this afternoon, since this uh, there are two sessions for uh, the fourth installment of the Open Government Week, uh, we are requesting everyone to register on. The session, ira noon at ngayon, alamin ang magbabago. We have our session organizers, of course, the DBM and the DALG later at 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So let us know, know about the salient features of the recent Mandanas Garcia case ruling. And uh, so uh, thank you very much for participating and uh, God bless to all of you. Thank you. The Philippine Open Government Partnership launched its first co-created National Action Plan in December 2019. The international open government commitments that embody the plan aim to contribute towards addressing pressing public problems and achieving a people-centered, clean, and efficient delivery of public services and building a high-trust, peaceful, and inclusive society. Consistent with this aim, implementation of the National Action Plan started at the beginning of 2020, but this was hampered by the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in the first quarter. The expected delays in implementation of action plans of member countries prompted the OJP Criteria and Standards Subcommittee to issue a resolution allowing extension of plan implementation to another year until August 31, 2022, for the end of term of the cycle 2019-2022. The revised Philippine Open Government Partnership National Action Plan is characterized by the same co-creation process that made the former version of the plan the most extensive and inclusive of all the action plans the country had. This revision follows the basic requirements of the OGP's Participation and Co-creation Toolkit 2. Leveraging on available technology and innovation in the midst of the pandemic, the consultation process conducted with commitment holders, non-government partners, and other stakeholders was done using different online or virtual platforms. As government and civic organization operations revert to virtual means for the communication, consultation, and collaboration aspects, the process of national action plan revision followed with the orientation orientation on the guidelines of extended implementation and the succeeding bilateral meetings and consultations done online through various online platforms. Many of us have given so much of ourselves to make sure that this happens. So methodologies have been used, a lot of, of, of strategies, many policy changes, many program trusts have been uh, tried and tested, all for the sake of making government at all levels, national to the local.